Tone hustle, I'm back on the block with that sack. All of that whole bow dog and it's bagged up in them bags. Nickel dog and I'm posted, posted. trying to slam these bags off. Trying to get all right, yeah. Coming up for me, it all started, you know, on Seven Mile in Wyoming. You know, I grew up on the street called West Constant. And you know, back then when I was coming up, it wasn't really about the dope game, cause the dope game really hadn't hit too hard in my community. It was mostly about gang banking. And in the neighborhood I grew up in, you know, it was Sub Mile BK. That was the name of the hood. And if you lived there, you basically was in the gang whether you wanted to because people from other neighborhoods treated you as if you was in it. You know, and for me, it all started like one day, me and my brother, we went down the street and was playing basketball at like a friend's house. And we didn't know nothing about gangs at the time because we had just moved over there. And while we was playing, you know, a guy fouled me. So, you know, he was saying that I was out of bounds and I was saying, you know, he pushed me out and he reached for the ball. So I fired on him, you know, and we get to fighting back there. And, you know, and I didn't know at the time that everybody in the backyard was up my BKs, you know, but they let me and old boy scrap and go head up. And, you know, and I, I, I put it on him. And then, you know, the next day I went to school and they rolled down on me and confronted me and they asked me, like, you a BK, ain't you? And at the time, I didn't even know what it was, but I was like, yeah. So they were like, oh, we BKs too, you know, and they gave me doubt, you know what I'm saying, and told me that if I ever had any problems with anybody, let them know. And ever since then, you know, they started walking home from school with me, and, you know, I was basically like in. And that's how it started as far as that go with me. What up, though? This is Hero Troy, you know, straight from the state block, CFOB in the building, you know. Giving shout outs to our OG, Triple OG through the hood, you know, who did his time and ain't rat on nobody, you know, you gotta get big ups to that, cause a lot of these niggas out here rats giving Detroit niggas a bad name. But you know, we seven mile niggas, you know. I gotta let y'all know this one of the OG BKs, you know, who was doing his thing back in the day until, you know, the laws came and did some fuckery shit. So we gonna keep it one hundred and I'm just wanted to let y'all know this the area we from, you know, Wyoming area, you know, we we do our thing around this motherfucker. Action. All right, um, in 1990, when I really started messing around on the rap tip, you know, my little brother used to hang out with this little dude in the hood that called himself Tricky, you know what I'm saying, Chris. <clears throat> and uh, so I went over there and was chilling with him in the basement, because, you know, they had been going around doing shows all at the state fair and all these different places. But they wasn't making no money or nothing. And they ain't had no tape out or nothing. They just was going around doing shows. So I, I was over there and I hollered let the guy trick. And I told him like, well, I'll finance this if, you know, you cut me in. You know, take me to the studio. Let me bust some raps on there. And I'll put all this stuff out and, and blow this stuff up. And that's basically like how it all started. You know, we went to the studio, mess with my man, Mo Master, and, you know, we started making these songs, and I was going around the hood letting people hear it. And at the time, I had met a chick who used to work for the Source magazine named Stephanie. And Stephanie, she was, like, schooling me on everything and telling me what to do because I didn't really know what to do. I just had the money to do it. So she told me, like, I had all these songs. She told me that uh, I needed to get them copywritten, and then she told me that uh, I needed to, like, <clears throat> get the tapes pressed up and things like that and go put it in the store. So once I did that, I went around and put them in the store. I had Strictly Sports selling them, Shantanese was selling them, and um, then we were selling them out the trunk, you know what I'm saying, and moving them. I, I even had them sold up at, at Kendrick the uh a record store in Detroit and at the time I never knew about no singers named Eddie Kendrick I never knew about no Temptations or whatever singing group he was with on top or something but I had fell out with him because I had called him and asked him like did you sell them tapes I gave you and he was like no nah, who you think you is Michael Jackson <laughs> So I was like, damn, you know who he talking to? Because, you know, I'm out here slanging these tapes off the hip. And, you know, you're a record store. So I'm thinking that you should be and, and so out selling me. Man, he cutting me like I think I'm Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? So I, I go up there. 
And you know, we have our little words on the phone. When I get up there, his son, I think Eddie Kendricks Jr. or something, and, uh, I guess they bodyguards or something, they was all in the breakfast store waiting on me. You know what I'm saying? So I came there, he like, was that you talking to my daddy on that phone? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know, why y'all ain't selling these tapes? And then he kind of like pulled me to the side and schooled me like, when people go to a record store, they coming in there looking for what they want already. They not just coming there buying anything. They already know what they coming to get. And so he was like, by me selling them in the street, I could sell them quicker than a record store because people coming in the record store looking, already knowing what they want. So I was like, all right, and we came to a nice little understanding. So I left him up there. And like when I talked to Stephanie that night, she already knew that I had gotten into it with Kendrick's and them. She asked me, like, what happened? And I'm like, what's up? She's like, they calling around trying to ball you, telling people don't even sell your stuff. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah. She was like, you can't even go up there. And then she told me to hire some uh, some dude to go and handle all the business. I forgot what what they call, but like a not really a, a manager, but like some kind of like personal assistant type of person, you know. So we went and got a dude to handle the business like that and take it to the store. And uh, but the thing was, people wouldn't come into the record stores looking for our product because nobody knew who we were. We were slanging them in the hood, face to face with people, but in the stores, where nobody looking for. It. So they told me like, y'all need a video. So you know, me and my man Click came together, and that's when we had to form the company too. So you know, we went and started a little company and. We had to do the video. That's basically like when I brought him in all the way on the video. So, you know, we went and we shot our little Life of a Gangster video, you know, GVK, which was Mark D. And my man, they called Trick Trick. You know what I'm saying? Man, it's Tony Dustin, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm rapping that Murder Maiden. I'm, I'm going to let y'all niggas know about this rap game, man. You got a lot of niggas around here, man. They talk a whole lot of shit, but they not really living that shit. You see me, man. I'm in the hood all day, man. I'm out here. I really do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Fucking with my man's Mark. He came home. You know what I'm saying? Two seven of my niggas connected together. I brought a couple of my HP niggas through. And we about to change the rap game. Like I said, these niggas is talking that bitch and shit. We really live in that shit over here. Like, we doing the fuck we do over here. Then you can hear it in the music and fuck around and come see that shit in real life. Like, and that's some real talk shit. You know what I mean? Like I say, it's that murder man shit. You know what I'm saying? It's me, Savage Life, my nigga Mark, you know what I'm saying? A couple other cats we still on a hunt for. And basically, we about to just take over, man. Anybody that don't like that shit, y'all can get the fuck on. All right, now, like when I was doing the rap, you know, me and Trick, we had made like a little skit on our tape. And on the tape, it was a skit where we was riding in the car and we got pulled over by the police. And the police was asking me for my license and my registration. And you know, and I pulled out a gun and started shooting at the police on the tape. And little did I know that this would become my reality. Because I ended up getting into a shootout with the police. You know, and going to prison for 20 years for assault with intent to commit murder against two Detroit police officers. And it and you know, at the time when the incident popped off, you know, I got away with it. You know, I ain't get caught or nothing, but this little rat that I had in my circle snitched me out, you know, and it it was so fucked up when I read his statement, he told the police like, I'm on parole, I'll tell you whatever you wanna know. You know what I'm saying? He told the police that I you know, was the one shooting, he told him I was in the rap game, he told him I sold dope, I mean, he went and just told everything he knew about me to the police, and gave my phone up. You know, I was chilling over my homeboy house, and, and my beeper went off. You know, this was back when they had beepers, you know, before the cell phone. Well, no, we had cell phones too, but beepers was the thing, but, you know, the police beat me. And so I, I called this little female and told her to call the number back because I don't usually call numbers back that I don't know. So she called on the three-way and the police was like 12th Precinct Police Department. And then I was like, yeah, somebody called the beef. And they was like, yeah, you got to come down here and make a statement. 
So I was like, well, my statement is I don't know shit. And then I told old girl to hang up the phone, you know. And then next thing I know, my next door neighbor called me. And she was like, what you do? I was like, nothing. What? She was like, they got the street blocked off. It's a helicopter flying over your house, shining the light. I was like, oh, straight up. She was like, yeah, dog. She was like, they looking for you. So I was like, all right. So that's when I realized, okay, these lame must have snitched me out. You know what I'm saying? And it's fucked up because the, the rat, he like one of them Sammy the Bull type rats. You know, you got to remember Sammy the Bull was like the hit man for John Gotti. You know, he's supposed to be a real hardcore motherfucker. But he turned into a rat. And but even though he snitched John Gotti out, he still running around in the hood, you know, doing his thing because he felt like he was laying like that. And you know the rat who told on me, he a Sammy the Bull type rat. You know he think no matter that he didn't snitch me out because he, you know, got a reputation for being hard in the hood, he still all right with motherfucker. In the same way everybody embraced this rat Sammy the Bull, everybody embracing him. When I came home after serving 20 years, and I seen that everybody was cool with this snitch. It made me back up because I was like, I can't mess with somebody that's cool with a rat. You know, I'm not messing with no rat and I'm not messing with no If you a real hood street nigga, you ain't finna be messing with no rat. And, and that's how I looked at it because your credibility shot now. Because how you gonna mess with somebody that's a certified rat, that's a known rat that not didn't just tell, make a statement, but took the stand and was pointing me out like yeah that's him right there you know what I'm saying and you hanging with him you cool with him so I bagged up off a lot of people on the strength of that because I felt like you know you can't be solid because ain't no real motherfucker gonna be friends with no rat I don't care who it is so I bagged up off a lot of people man and went and got me a whole new crew that saw things like I see it because if you know he telling and you hanging with him, then to me that made me feel like you a tell too. Because, or you know, sick him on on somebody to tell because you already know he going to tell. You know what I'm saying? That's etched in stone, man. It's written on the scroll. You know what I'm saying? But that's how it went, man. But the thing about prison for me is that it, it didn't slow me down. It didn't break me or nothing. Because, you know, I sold dope in the street. I went to prison and I sold weed in prison. You know what I'm saying? So I never really switched over, you know. But, and I came home. You know what I'm saying? Like a G, I am. You know, I... Yo, bro. What up, It's Savage Life. This your man, Tony know. Hustle, man. We in here, man. Hustle Life, you know what I'm saying? Group of murder men. We holding that shit down. You All know the way. The niggas Smoke better be weed, where. This money. Loud guys. The niggas better be where we come. <laughs> You niggas need to be on the lookout, bitch. Mark them can't got the right niggas. Stop. We hood niggas. We not hood. Ain't no one hood street. Street. Uh -huh. We from everywhere. We do everything. Shit, boy. Seven mile to HP. All day. Seven mile to HP all the way to the east. You know what I'm saying? That's how we do it. Murder men in this bitch, boy. Thanks, murder men. I'll let you, boy, man.